Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, been up since 4 a.m. this morning. It is now 8 p.m. No, 9 p.m. Imagine that. And I've been putting together this for the last two hours. It is 17 pages, two hours worth of 17 pages worth of information. Uh, with the exception of the rescission document, ladies and gentlemen, this is a redress petition. There are so many points being brought up in this short petition before the small claims court. I keep saying from time to time, I'm amazing my own self, and I'm not joking about this. Anybody who has any knowledge of what the law is and can read this and understand the points that are being made within the law will recognize that this is definitely, in two hours of time, the best thing I've ever produced regarding a lawsuit in a small, especially in a small claims court. Ladies and gentlemen, I did no so-called uh, U.S. codes or any of that junk. I did add case citations only to prove a point. This can be used by people who are incarcerated, people who had been incarcerated in the past, people who are on probation. This could be used by people who are dealing with child support, people who have car loans, student loans, home loans. This all in one document, the only thing you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, give me a second. I am gonna make this available for everybody. It just won't be available today. I still have to proofread it. There's gonna be a section here where you all are gonna put in your information. There is an on or about section right here. I'm about to expand this on or about, okay? So that you guys can watch this. On or about, the hearing name did knowingly, deliberately, uh, disregard for the sanctity of law, my inheritance status as the prosperity as mentioned in the declaration and let me do this first so that you guys will know this is where you're going to fill in this area. You're going to move these lines out of the way. But this is just so that you know this is the area where you put in the specifics of your case. I don't care if you have a claim against the judge, a claim against the school board. Doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. This is not against the official. This is against their insurance. Okay. This brings up all the points, including the junk that Congress did. Okay? There you go. Now, what I got to do, I didn't, I didn't do it right. I got to undo that. Let's see. How many more? Yeah, I did it. You did. You just went too far. I got to undo that. I got to go back that way. Let's do it again. Whew. Uh-uh. That ain't enough. Hold on now. We're doing this for y'all. Now, see, what I have to do is that, and then that, and then that, and then that, and then that. Now, I got to say that because those are the areas where you guys will fill in everything. If you need to add more, you can do exactly what I just did. Get rid of the lines and... Go ahead and put that stuff in. Leave the lines if you're sending it to somebody who's incarcerated. Leave the lines if you're sending it to somebody who's incarcerated. Ladies and gentlemen, small claims court. Now, wait, hold on. We'll, we're going to talk about it in depth in another video, probably Thursday. But small claims court. Let's say small claims. I get that out of my courtroom. No problem, Your Honor. And then what you do is you take the same document and you follow it against that judge in the same court and you take his denial of your right to access to court. You appeal it based on the information in this document. You appeal it to the appeals court and you appeal it all the way to the state Supreme Court. There is this rule called Rooker Feldman. Once you get to the state Supreme Court, you appeal it to the United States court because these issues affect the entire nation. How do we know it affects the entire nation? Because that's the points it brings up. By the way, we bring up that thing about the 470, I mean, 470 provisions of federal law which delegate extraordinary authority to the executive branch in a time of national emergency. Okay, Congress didn't have the authority to do that. 
this was a War Powers Act. They actually called it the War Powers Act. So because it was a War Powers Act, they don't have the authority to apply a war act, military act to the people. The Third Amendment, that's a violation of the Third Amendment. Don't worry about it. We'll go over this document. I'll bring up all of the facts that we're talking about. We'll bring up the fact that Congress said that it was the war powers given back in 1917, particularly the war powers. So they knew that they were applying a military act to the people. That's called subjugation. It's illegal. It's involuntary servitude. How dare they think that they could put the people in servitude? They're public servants. They're not, oh, Lord have mercy. They're not kings. They're not sovereigns. So that's what this document is for. Ladies and gentlemen, whew, a lot of work, this document right here. So we're going to save. Now, y'all see, y'all heard me. Y'all see me do save, right? I did save. Wait, hold on. Now, look, this ain't, I'm going to give y'all the link so that y'all can know. Give me a second. Hold on now. We're going to put this on the internet because I promise you, in my opinion, and I'm not patting myself on nobody's stupid back. I know many of you are not even going to use it. You're going to want to add all your junk to it. And I'm promising you, you don't need to add all that other stuff to it because this ain't got nothing to do with that. Most of the stuff you're going to want to add, never mind. I, I can't talk to people. They, they think they know more than I do. They think they've been doing this longer than I have. When I tell you people that I've been doing this since I was 15 and a half years old, going into court by myself, and these idiots, these judges, Letting that 15 and a half year old, well, a little bit more than a half, almost 16, go into court and represent himself in court. And I've been doing it ever since, helping people with their cases since I was 16 years old. Technically, before I was 16, people were asking me about their cases and I'm sitting up there helping them go to court. Ladies and gentlemen, I said 15. 15, 1983, subtract 2024, well, it's not technically 2024, 2023 from 83. Go ahead, do, do the years and tell me how long ago that was. That's how long I've been doing this. I ain't got to prove that to nobody. I know I'm good at what I do, not because I'm great or anything. I'm good at what I do because the God I serve allows me to be good at what I do. He's the one who allows me to know this stuff, to remember it. When I definitely can't remember what I did earlier today. I can't tell you what I did yesterday, not without thinking about it. Definitely can't tell you what I did Sunday or Saturday or last. What day is this? Tuesday? I can't even tell you what I did last Tuesday. Literally would have to think really hard. And that's too much. That's too much for me. Because that thought process, unless it's important, I don't worry about what happened last week. I don't worry about none of that stuff because I can't hold on to it, but I can hold on to this stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, you see this document right here that I just saved? Hold on. We's going to put it on there and we're going to put the link for this document with this. Now you guys are going to have to double check the cases because I haven't had time to double check them because like I said, I'm tired. It's been two hours, but I'm confident in what I put together. There might be some, I haven't spell checked it. I'm putting this up here because this is too good not to put up here. Y'all heard what I just said. This is too good not to put up here. It's in re in the small claims court of record. That's the title of the document. We are gonna put that in this folder. Where you at? Okay, drop it like it's hot. It's gonna be in the financial documents folder. Okay, I'm going to give y'all the link. So what we're going to do is right there, copy URL to clipboard. It's already online. So hold on. Got one more thing to do. I left it open on purpose. My mind's, my mind's telling me no. Okay. We're going to put this here too. So it's going to be up there twice. I'm going to give you guys the one in the legal understanding. That's that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you all the one in the legal understanding. That's easier because that's the title of the folder, a legal understanding. So, ladies and gentlemen, you'll get that in a second. I, with that being said, I got to go. 
I definitely got to get some rest. Wednesday is going to be a very long day because it's the longest day of the week. In 10 minutes, if you don't believe me about this document, take it and do this. Before we do all of that, let's go. Let's go property rights. Just real quick. I want you guys just to hear what it says under property rights. Like I said, it's going to be some spell issues because I'm giving this to you before I can even. Property rights. Sleep. Then we have the unconstitutional practice, sanctioned by the court, to take people's property without due process of law. This is a direct violation of the Fifth Amendment and it happens every day on a continual basis, without redress. The Federal Reserve Act specifically authorizes the local Federal Reserve agent to receive promissory notes from individuals, corporations, and partnerships Title IV, Section 401 Subsection 18, 6, and Section 403, and the amendments found at 59 Stat 237 to specifically highlight that a promissory note, tendered to the local Federal Reserve agent, operate as collateral and security for Federal Reserve notes, and upon delivery to the local Federal Reserve agent, said Federal Reserve notes are to be issued to the local Federal Reserve agent, with the approval evidenced by the receipt of the promissory note and the application is identified as Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10 Appendix 3, thus, satisfying the obligation, which is why the government through the United States Congress has stated, that the promissory note once delivered is to be received at PAR. Such notes shall be the obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same, shall be informed prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury, shall be receivable at PAR in all parts of the United States for the same purposes as our national bank notes. Under the Federal Reserve Act obligations that are deposited as the security and gold for reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. This provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve Bank notes, not for Federal Reserve notes, and the security back of it is the obligations, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptances, <coughs> outlined in the section and they were discussing I refer to section 401, which reads, upon deposit with the treasurer of the United States of all contract obligations of the United States, or any notes, it is the courts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there is one thing that I forgot to do and I'm going to do it now. Watch this. Because it is for Federal Reserve notes. So what we do is we... We do that right there. Now it says what it's supposed to say. This provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve notes and the security backed of it because as of June 12th, 1945, section number two, it is now Federal Reserve notes. So the other document won't have that. Like I said, that's up there for you guys to read. You're going to get the link. Yeah, I've already closed it. You're going to get the link. Like I said, I'm tired and I don't want to make another mistake. So I'm going to save this for me now. I have to go back. I have to listen to it, too. So I'm going to tell you guys, go and listen to it. Don't read it. Listen to it. Listen to what it says. All of our people, our mortgage people, our student loan people, you see this applies to student loan because it's all promissory notes. Student loan, car loans, mortgage. It's all promissory notes. I didn't even, nothing in here talks about the necessities of life because it's not necessary. See, ne necessary, necessity, anyway. <sighs> Gotta go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, less than 15 minutes. I hope you appreciate it because this wasn't done for me. But I promise you, you have my word. I will be utilizing this document in every last one of my small claims cases from this point forward. I guarantee you. Because I'm going to be going before kings with this document. I guarantee it. I could not have done better than what I did tonight. I promise I could not have done better than this. But I'm too tired to talk right now. And no, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm talking about the way this thing was put together. Gotta go. Y'all take care.